So this is read in maze class. See here, we have given a maze. It's a four cross four matrix having zeros and ones. Now let's go ahead with creating and calling a method to solve this maze or to find the path to be traversed by the red. So let's call it solve the maze. And the first argument to this method is the maze itself. Now we have to make the red start from somewhere and the position from where the red starts its journey is the first cell where the value for both row and the column is zero. So let's pass x and y and solve the maze is gonna return a boolean. So to accumulate the result, we don't have anything yet. So we need another matrix of same size. Let's take n, which would be equal to the maze dot length, which for this maze is four. And now let's create another matrix of same dimensions. Let's call it solve and it's new int n n. And after creating it, I'm going to pass this matrix and the n in this method. And let's start the main implementation. So when we implement backtracking problem, first we check for constraints. So the first element is constraints, right? To check the constraints on the current cell, let's create a separate method and let's call it is safe. And let's pass maze x, y, oh, let's name i and j, replace with x and y. If this is true, then mark the current cell of the solution matrix, which is sol x, y, mark it 1. So we will put 1 here in this cell in our solution matrix. Let's tell the program when to include this cell by implementing this is safe method. So here in this is safe method, what are the constraints we are going to pass? First condition is that X and Y both must be present inside the maze. So X must be greater than or equal to zero and it should be less than N. And similarly, we have Y y should be greater than or equal to 0 and y must be less than n and the current cell must be having value 1 so maze x y must be equal to 1 so if this is true then this is safe method is going to return true so when the cell is safe to be included in the path traversed by the red, we're marking it with one. Now comes recursion. We have two choices. First, we can go in x direction. So let's check if we can go forward in x direction. If solve maze, so here comes the recursion, where, where we are calling the solve the maze method recursively. And let's pass the maze. We are going to go in x direction, so we have to increase the x by 1, and we will keep the y same and then pass the solve matrix and n. So if we can go forward in x direction, we're gonna return true. Otherwise, we can go in y direction. So let's again co solve the maze recursively. It's gonna return boolean so let's change the return type and now solve the maze pass the maze and we'll keep x same and we will increment the y and we will pass the solve matrix and n so if we can go forward in y direction we're gonna return true here but if none of the above movements work then we have to backtrack So let's backtrack. How are we gonna backtrack the solution? Let's write the backtracking step. We here we set the value for this current cell with one. So here we are going to undo our decision. So let's unmark x, y cell as part of the solution. 
and to do that we just have to overwrite it with zero and now return false saying that this current cell cannot be included in the solution so almost the solution is complete now comes the base case so if we reach to the goal when we will reach to the goal when the x will be n minus 1 and y will be n minus 1 because this is the last cell so here we will update the value for this last cell and we will return true so these are the preconditions that x must be n minus 1 y must be n minus 1 and the cell must be having value 1 if this is true then we will update the last cell of the soul matrix with 1 and will return true so this is how we will get the final updated path as the soul matrix let's add the return statement so if it is not safe to include the current cell then we are not going to do anything we will just return false now the implementation is complete let's go back to our main method and here let's print the solution matrix so for first loop is for let's say rows so for i equals to 0 until i is less than n we're gonna increment the i and inside this we're going to take another loop for columns j starting from 0 till n and increment the j and here we are going to print each element of the soul matrix so soul i j and we are going to separate these elements with spaces so we are going to put some spaces between these elements and one space after this element and then one row completes after that we will change the line and here it should be print so this everything we are going to print only when the solve the maze is going to return true so if solve the maze return true then print the solution matrix as print that path not available or no path available so now this is the complete solution of the red in maze problem let's try running it and see what we get so this is the solution matrix where we have this path from this maze that we initially had now let's change this and again run this this time we have two path right so let's run this this time the path we get is this one because first we are taking x and and here x is standing for rows so if we are going recursively towards x that is we're changing rows each time so that's why this is the solution path and this is how we can solve the red in the maze problem using backtracking Let's meet in next lecture with a different problem.